Hi, and welcome to the Duke Seculus part of Desert Treasure 2. I'm doing this one first out of the four, because in my opinion, this part is the easiest. There are no required items, and for the suggested items, approximately two prayer potions should be enough, and the rest of the inventory should be some food, armor, weapon, and potions. For the armor, I suggest you to bring along as much melee strength bonus as possible, and some prayer bonus will always be helpful. I'm bringing along a Serpentine Helm, not because the boss is poisonous or venomous, but because you can poison the boss. This is also why I've brought a Dragon Dagger P++. For the weapon, the boss is weak against Arclight, so I suggest you to bring that. If you don't have that, then you could use any slash weapon to your liking. I suggest either the Scythe of Vita or just a regular whip. For the teleports, two to Vice. You could use a simple Icy Basalt teleport, but if you don't have access to those, you could also take the boat next to the fairing north of Releka and take the boat next to Larry that will take you to Vice. Then after we have done the big puzzle, one teleportation method to a bank to prepare for the boss fight if there is a need to. And then after we've defeated the boss, one teleport to Narda to store the medallion in the statues in the vault where we have just went to. All right, once you think you are ready, let's make our way to Vice. And let's go to Maspa from the Secrets of the North boss fight. So go through the broken fence, descend the stairs to the basalt mine and run south through the crevice, just like Secrets of the North quest. This part is really similar to Secrets of the North. Next up, go east and enter the northeastern room. Open the door and go north and try to enter the heavy door. Keep pressing space until the conversation is over and then enter the heavy door again and you'll enter the Garak prison. Once you're here, go a little bit north and the screen should turn black and you will be teleported to the prison and also all your stuff will be temporarily taken away from you. Once you're here in prison, just two tiles north of you, there you should find a inspect that hole in the wall and should speak to a mysterious stranger. Keep pressing space, then search the skeleton just next to you, read the letter, then search the bucket, keep pressing space, then inspect the hole again to trade the knife for a chisel, then use a chisel on the bed, press space for a lockpick, then inspect the wall, and you'll put the lockpick in that very small hole. And the assassin will free you from the prison. Once the conversation is over, we will need to go north. Go a little bit north until you see a crossroad. We will need to be at this crossroad quite a bit, just like in the Song of the Elves. At the crossroad, go east and there will find a gate. Open it and then go further east. Keep going east until you see another gate. This gate will be locked with a lock. This is random for everyone, but just like in the Secrets of the North quest, as well as the King Ransom quest, you can brute force this. Just click on confirm, see whether anything is green, then put everything one tile higher, except for the one that is green, and just brute force everything until you have unlocked the door. Next, continue going east, not north, go east, and follow the path until you can't go any further. All 
right once you are here in the refugee camp which is also looks like a torture chamber go south and enter that room with the altar go southeast and they'll find a chest open it and they'll find a code just like in the secret of the north quest type in 214 O13. Confirm, and you will get the sapphire key. Next up, go to the northwestern corner and you'll find a crate. Search it for some rations. This is a stamina potion and some food. Next up, go north and go through the northern gate. Here's the sapphire key so you don't need to run all the way around anymore. Go all the way back west to the crossroad. Just keep going west. Here at the crossroad, go north and go up the stairs. Eat some rations for a stamina potion dose. Be sure to use rations as your stamina potion dose. Keep going north until you have made it to the final room. Open that gate and here you'll find 25 chests. Go all the way to the most western line and open the center chest. Attempt to open the chest and then type in lies. L I E S. Confirm and we'll get an emerald key. Next up, go back east. And once you open the gate, you will get attacked by a wizard. So, use Protect for Magic. Open the door. Let's go east. He doesn't spawn. Why doesn't he spawn? And keep running east. But starting from now, when you start opening doors, there will be a chance that a mage will start attacking you. Open the door and unlock the crevice just east. Yep, go to the other side. Next up, open the door and go south. Open the southern gate and they'll find a room full of beds. Search the most southeastern chest. And the code is the same for everyone. It is up, then right, left, down, and then right up. Confirm. And you'll get a ruby key. Next up, let's open the emerald gate. Use protect for mat. Let's go back south. And follow the path westward. Keep going west until you've made it back to the main crossroad. Here's the mage. Use protect for magic. Keep going west. Yeah, keep going west until you've made it back to the crossroad. Here at the crossroad, continue going west, open that gate, and then keep following the path, and there you'll find two rooms. Enter the southern one, turn off protect from magic, and they'll find a chest. Open the chest, and the solution to this chest is wrath. Confirm. And you will get a diamond key. Open the gate. And let's go south. I'm out of rations. So I'm going to the room just west. And I'm going to search this crate in the northwestern corner for three more rations. That's going to be helpful for running. Next up, continue going east. Turn off Protect for Magic and continue running north. The third room on your west, there will be a diamond gate. Try to open it 
and keep pressing space to talk to the assassin. After the conversation is over, open the gate again and then search the chest inside of this prison and you will get all of your stuff back. Maybe use a ration before you do so, so you can have your 100% run energy. Open the chest and you'll have all of your stuff back. Oh, your stamina potion dose is also gone. Alright, once you have your stuff back, let's exit the prison and talk to the assassin again. This time, he will teleport away. After the conversation is over, let's run north back to the crossroads and afterwards run east back to the refugee camp. In the refugee camp, we will need to be using Protect from Magic for two minutes straight, as well as avoiding smoke attacks and killing 1 HP illusions. So, keep going east, open two gates, keep going east, and then open the first door to your south, and you're back in the refugee camp. In the center, they'll find a big pillar. In the northwestern corner, they'll find a pack. If the pack isn't here, that means that the assassin is still near the prison. Go speak to the assassin, and then the crate will be replaced with a pack. Once you think you are ready, use Protect from Magic, search the pack, and say yes to start the two-minute timer. I like to stay just up north and just wait. You just need to, yeah, do nothing. Wait until there are smoke attacks that you can avoid, or when there are illusions that you can attack. Aside from that, there's literally nothing you can do. Just wait and just tank. You can always stand behind a pillar when there are illusions, so there's only one attacking you. Alright, once the two minutes are over, the assassin will come and save you. And this is the first demi-boss of the quest completed. Now there's only one more thing remaining, and that is the actual boss fight. But first off, let's unlock the free teleport so we don't need to run through this Gorok prison. First, open up the gate north and follow the path back west. And then just keep going north. Open the gate going east. Then take the first path going north. And keep going north until you see the dragon stone door. Open that and climb down the stairs. Once you're here, go north and open the northern gate. 
and this will be the boss room but no worries the boss is currently asleep it is the weakest boss out of the four in my opinion but i'm not gonna risk it and i'm first gonna go to the bank to prepare and get some more food So here at the bank, what you can deposit is your stamina potion that is no longer needed since you've unlocked the teleport right there once you enter the crevice. Bring one icy basalt to make your way back to Vice and then also one Narda teleport to bring the medallion to the ancient vault. And after you've brought the medallion into the vault, one teleport to a bank to prepare for the next boss. One prayer potion should be fine. Besides from that, bring the same gear, as much melee strength bonus as possible, and maybe a poisonous weapon would be nice. And besides from that, a full inventory of food. Once you think you are ready for the boss fight, let's make our way to Vice. And let's return to the Gorok prison, which is right next to the Secrets of the North Bath, Muspa. Right, once you have made it back to the northeastern room and you have entered the heavy door, you will be teleported to the boss room. And you've skipped the entire Gorak prison. Right, let's open up the gate and enter the boss room. First off, to wake up the boss, we will need to make two kind of poisons. Therefore, we will need to have some inventory space. I'm just going to be having three empty inventory slots, that should be enough. You'll see some circular shades. Do not stand on those because then you will be stunned as well as take approximately 10 to 20 damage. First up, go west of the entrance and they'll find a pestle and mortar on the wall. Take it and then go a little bit west, but watch out for the shades. Next up, stand next to the first extremity and wait until they start beaming their lights but still pay attention to the shades do not stand on those once you've made it across let's pick up some elder mushrooms and then grind them with your pestle and mortar until you have at least 12 in your inventory crushed you either get five or six depending on your herbal level once you have above 12, go stand next to the first extremity and wait until it fires its beam of light. And then make your way back. Don't stay on the... God damn it. The shades. Right, once you've made it back to the center, do the same with the eastern side. Watch out for the shades. Stay as close as possible to the extremities, wait until all three of them have shown their beam of light and just pass through them and watch out for the shades. Next up, pick up the Muska Shrooms. Use your pestle and mortar on it until you get at least 12 and then make your way back. But watch out for the shades as well as the beams of light. Once you have 12 of each and you've made it back to the center, you may drop your pestle and mortar and just east of the door, you'll find a pickaxe on the wall. Take it and next up, we'll need to mine some salt. They are in the center of the center area. Watch out for the vents. They must not be fuming poisonous gas. Wait until they stop shooting poisonous gas and then mine any salt deposit. The western or the eastern one, doesn't matter. 
Do this until you have at least 12 pieces of salt. Once you have 12, wait until the vents stop fuming and go back to the entrance. Next to the entrance, next to the stairs, you'll find two fermentation vats. Fill both of them, then go to the other one and fill. You may drop your pickaxe and then just collect from the vat and then also collect from the other vat. Destroy the leftover shroom powder, it's no longer needed, and pick up your food or potions or whatever you've dropped. Next up, it is time for the boss. Drink your potions and let's make our way to the boss. Let's wait for the vents to stop fuming and let's go stand next to Duke Seculus. What I suggest you to do is to stand behind the pillar right next to the Duke. West or east doesn't matter because we will need to move between the two pillars continuously during this boss fight. Now there's one big special attack. When your screen gets a little darker, there will be an eye shown. When that eye is shown, you must stay behind a pillar, else you will take above 90 damage. Besides from that, we will just need to attack the Duke and then just stand behind the pillar again. Attack and go back, just like the Black Knight Titan from the Holy Grail quest. Attack with melee and go stand back behind the pillar. Besides from that, it will also trigger the vents fuming some poison, but they are not actually poisonous. Let's start the fight by using both vials on the duke, use protect for melee as well as Spidey, and then just kill the boss. Use a spec, wait until he slams, use a spec, go back behind the pillar, it slams, go back, go wait, and it slams. Once there's an eye shown, go stand behind a pillar. After the eye special, do the same as before. Attack once and hide behind the pillar. Once the eye special has been done, then you will know that the next special will be to operate a vent. Once you see the green sludge, go as fast as possible to the other side. And at the other side, do the same thing. Attack once, hide behind the pillar to avoid the slam attack, and then attack again. Do this until the boss is defeated. Oh, wow, it's already done. Nice. Be sure to pick up the odd key. Next up, go south. And open the southern gate. Next up, let's go west. Open the western door. You have defeated a very difficult boss just to be able to enter this room and the assassin is already here. Right, let's talk to him and keep pressing space. After speaking to him, let's go to the southeastern corner and open the chest. Open the chest to find a medallion. Next up, let's make our way to the ancient vault at the start of the quest. I'm gonna quickly pray at the Eladina statue for 100% red energy. And let's make our way to the ancient vault to put the medallion in one of the four statues and complete one out of the four parts of this quest. If this is your first or second medallion, then there will be a mysterious figure spawning. If it is your first medallion, then a mysterious figure will simply be threatening you. If it is your second medallion, then it will start attacking you. Simply enter the vault and the mysterious figure will not be able to enter this vault.
Right. Use the Seculus Medallion on the Southwestern Statue to complete this part of the quest. Let's go to the bank to prepare for the next part of this quest. You may choose any of your liking. Links are in the description. Okay, thanks, bye.